welcome to my channel. My name is Gemma and I am mum to four children, a three-year-old boy called Oscar and triplet boys who are currently four months old, Sebastian, Ashton and Hendrix. And in this week's video, I'm going to give you a tour of our playroom. We have actually moved house in March this year. I'm confused because I didn't actually move house in March this year because I was in hospital on bed rest when my husband and Oscar moved to this house and then I moved to this house after I had the triplets. So and obviously then there's been Covid and lockdown and it's just been a bit of a crazy year. So I wanted to film this video because so many of you ask about our new playroom, about the space that we have, about how it's changed now that Oscar is older. I've actually done, I think I've done two videos about our playroom. I did a maybe three. I'll link them all in the description box below but I've done um, a playroom when Oscar was a year old so I did a video about that and I've done some other videos about like additions to our playroom since then so I'll link all of that in the description box below but yes yeah, so this is a playroom designed for our three-year-old mainly but our babies do also use this space as well so it needs to be functional for all of them. So I'm going to give you a quick tour around our playroom I'm not going to include any of the storage in this video. I will do that in a separate video just because it will just take too long to put it into this video about how I store and rotate toys. But if that is something that you're interested in, keep an eye out on my channel because I will be doing a video all about our toy storage and how we do toy rotation. But in this video, I'm going to just give you a quick tour about what's in our playroom, what's how it's set up and how we use it. So as you come into the playroom, this is your view. So you've got this down here. And then this whole wall is storage. These are from Ikea and there's some bits on the top as well. Uh, so this is, and sorry, this is where we also keep our Montessori mobiles hanging just on the window there. Um, so this will be a whole separate video, but just so that you know, that is all the toy storage. And then down here we have a pickler and then I'm going to show you all round the rest of it. Okay, so first up front and centre in our playroom, right in the middle of the floor, is our climbing frame, which is called a pickler. Ours is from the brand Et Tet, and this is their Moppetry modifiable pickler frame, which means that it's not just a triangle like your conventional pickler, kind of this shape. You can actually change the shape, um, which makes it brilliant for keeping really fresh in your playroom. This video is actually being sponsored by Et Tet and I've worked with them before and if you have followed me for a while you will know that we had a Et Tet modifiable pickler frame um, and they have since redesigned it. So it is now slightly smaller and that is in order to comply with CE testing. So this is now fully CE tested um, so really really safe for your children to use and it comes with a slide and on the other side is also a ladder um, and I have to say even with the size difference from the previous one it has not changed the way that Oscar plays with it he will still use it exactly like he uses the other one it makes no difference to him whatsoever I think that's a great testament to actually just how versatile the toy is. He actually just uses it in different ways now that he's older. So he will start to balance on the top, he climbs up the slide, things that he never used to do when he was smaller. So he's just using it in different ways. And most importantly, also our triplets are using the um, Moppetry as well because they are using it as their play gym. So when I found out that I was pregnant with triplets, I suddenly was thinking, Oh my goodness, <laughs> how am I going to have four children in the playroom? Like, how are they going to be able to share that space? How am I going to have space for the babies and have space for Oscar? Um, and a play gym is something that you tend to have in your play space for a baby. And it just was going to clutter this space up so much. So I'm using this because it is, you know, it's the same as having a play gym. What well, all I do is I put a little um, fluffy rug underneath and then I hang our Montessori mobiles from the top and depending on it, whether there's one baby, two babies or three babies under there will just depend on the angle that I put them in. If it's just one baby or if you have just one baby, um, they fit really nicely just like you know straight down the middle and you can hang the mobiles over the top and if two or three of them are playing underneath it then we just turn them the other way so that they just um you know 
laying side by side underneath and they fit perfectly fine that way as well. So they are really enjoying that and really enjoying our Montessori mobiles. Then on this side of the room, so here is the door to come into the playroom. And I just have a few bits down on the floor here. So in this basket here, I just have some random recycling items. And if you've watched my open-ended toys on a budget video, I'll link it above now, you will know that this is one of the things that I really advocate for. So just having a basket and collect really interesting pieces of recycling. So we had a delivery, I can't even remember what it was, but all of these came with it. So these just end up being so many different things. They end up being boards to do his puzzle on, road, um, walls to knock down, <laughs> things like that. These were like protective things for the corners of a unit. And he uses these as like ball runs, uh, fire hose, you name it, it's been it. So I really advocate having something like this where you just put in interesting pieces of recycling for your child to just use in any way they see fit as like a super open-ended toy because one, it's really cheap, and two, it has loads of play value. Down here we have his broom, so whenever we do some cleaning or if he spills something, he knows where that is. And then down here we have our wobble board. Oscar is kind of hit and miss with the wobble board, to be honest. Sometimes it's really in focus and sometimes it gets left. Um, at the moment he is loving having the cushions on there and just kind of like chilling out, listening to his Yoto player. Um, and he also does wobble on it as well from time to time. Um, but he also uses it the other way up and um, kind of sits his legs under it and has a book. So it's not necessarily functioning as a wobble board all the time. So when I say he doesn't use it for wobbling, but he does use it for different things, <laughs> if you get my meaning. And then finally down here is his birthday present. He got a airport. So that's just the wooden airport, which was from Lidl. I will try to link something similar in the description box below if I can find something. And then there's just a box of like planes and airport buses and cars and stuff that go with it. So down in this area right by the door, we also have this little shoe rack. We've had this for a long time. It originally came from Jisk, if you have a Jisk near you. But essentially it's just a wooden shoe rack that has a solid metal base. So it's great if you have really small children because you can just use it as a tiny little shelf. It's great if you don't have space for a playroom um, and you can just have one of these in your living room with just a few little um, toys on it. You don't need to have loads of stuff and actually children always play better with less stuff. Um, so on here we have, at the bottom here, we have his set of Reduga Grez blocks. These are used all the time for loads of different things. Again, open-ended toys you'll see feature really highly in this playroom because they just get so much play out of. Um, they are quite expensive, but like I say, they get so much play out of them. And then underneath here, we just have a selection of Orchard Toy uh, puzzles and games. These are all what Oscar got for his birthday. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above now. But a lot of these things you'll see were his birthday things. So he had this aeroplane 30 piece puzzle. He has this Let's Go Lotto, uh, which is like a memory game. And he also has uh, Orchard Toys Shopping List, which basically is a game where you have a little shopping list and a trolley and you turn all the items upside down and then when you turn it over, if you have it on your shopping list, you get to put it in your trolley. It's really simple, but I would say really great for three-year-olds. And then on top, it's just a couple of other activities. This is kind of like our only like real like tray Montessori activity out at the moment, which is just um, using locks and keys. So here is some locks, padlocks. And here we have a set of locks I got from Amazon. I will link everything in the description box below. Uh, our grab out rings. And essentially all he has to do is find the right color, unlock the lock and stick it on this little spool. Um, and I have done an Instagram post all about how you can change this activity up to make it easier and then how you build as the skills progress. So if this is something that you're interested in, head over to my Instagram at The Way We Play and have a look for this image and you'll see how this has progressed to this stage because this isn't how it started. He started with one lock and one key and it's built up to this. And then this is a really cool little activity. It's just essentially a little board. 
and then you have pieces and it is basically like wooden tetris so you can just make patterns with it and things like that um and oscar absolutely loves it he will spend a lot of time doing it and i really love doing it because it's like um what do they call it mindfulness it's like a real mindfulness activity so yeah it's just got the wooden tetris pieces and a wooden board and you just make patterns with it so that's a really lovely little activity to do as well so it's kind of like a puzzle but with no set you know where you have to do it. okay so over in this area we have the ikea house i think it's actually a shelf in ikea but i used it originally as a bookshelf and now it is a doll's house the doll's house furniture was from i think aldi or lidl at christmas um but i will link there's another set that i've seen on amazon that has um, pretty much similar furniture um, but it's like a whole set so rather than buying each room you buy the whole set and it um, it interested me because I forgot to buy the bedroom <laughs> set and so now we don't have a bedroom um, Oscar doesn't seem too fussed about it but it really winds me up that I haven't got the bedroom so I've been trying to find one that fits the theme of the furniture because it's kind of like modern furniture <laughs> anyway that is a doll's house and it gets a lot of use. It doesn't necessarily get a lot of use as like dear, 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 doll's house. It gets a lot of use as um, being on fire and the fire truck has to come and save the people or there's a wrecking ball and it comes in and destroys everything in the house and then it has to, they have to rebuild the walls or uh, it needs to be cleaned with the broom <laughs> and so it all gets swept out. So it's not played with how I thought it would be played with, but there's no right way to play. So that's what gets done with the doll's house. It does get used a lot though. Behind it is a rug. In fact, behind it is a stove. Uh, this room used to be like a snug for the previous owners. We are uh, gonna do a complete rehaul of the house and that stove will be removed eventually. But yes, yeah, so there's a stove there that never, never gets used. There's also a play rug with road on, uh, a couple of extra cushions and a golf set that we take outside, but it just stays in here because it's wood. Okay, here we have the bookshelf for the playroom. Behind it is a radiator and on top is a mirror that I bring down when the babies are in here so that they are able to lay on the rug and look at themselves to build on their whole body schema. But otherwise it sits up there and a little pom-pom garland. And then this is our bookshelf, which is from Sprout. They gifted me this and it is absolutely brilliant. It actually comes in two sizes as well. So this is the large and it also comes in a smaller size. But I looked for so long for a bookshelf that was Montessori um, aligned where the books all face forward because it's so much easier for children to pick books when they face this way. So I wanted to find one and then they very kindly gifted me one. Um, but yeah, like I say, this is used all the time. I rotate the books quite frequently. At the moment, Oscar, you probably have a, a guess, is obsessed with dinosaurs, the world, oceans, weather, and vehicles, of course. So that's probably why you're seeing those kind of books. I have on my Amazon store all of the books that we love. So if there's anything that you're thinking I would be really interested to know about, check my Amazon storefront. Um, I have a whole section on our books as well. And then finally, there is our cubed shelf. This is what you'll probably see in most Montessori playrooms and it is useful insofar as in Montessori, it's really helpful to have one item really distinguished um, from the other things in the playroom so that your child can you know see what activity is there take it out play with it and know where to put it back rather than just having like boxes of dumped toys you do not need a cubed shelf though you can have this as like a bookshelf but it just makes life quite easy but what I would say is try to avoid the boxes that kind of fill the space because for young children particularly, they can't see what's inside it. And so you end up having that dumping thing going on where they have to kind of pull out the whole box, dump it out and find what they want. Uh, if you have smaller baskets that fit kind of half the space, they can see inside already as to what's there and pick out and you tend to get less dumping. But like I say, you don't need one of these shelves to have um, the perfect playroom, but it helps 
if you want to keep things kind of neat and tidy. Okay, I'm gonna whiz through so that this video isn't excessively long. <laughs> but in this section here, we have the Plan Toys Rocket. Oscar has had this for so long and it has lasted and been interesting for him for so long because it not only, you don't only have to place these, but you also, there's like internal pieces that you also have to place as well. So it's lasted him a long time because it's taken him a long time to actually master the skills. He's still not completely confident, doesn't have the stamina to do the whole thing. So it's still out, it's still used. Um, here we just have these little box shelves. And on here we have um, some stacking dolls, but animals. Uh, if your child is in the containment schema, having one of these is fantastic. If you don't know what the containment schema is, I'll link a video for you. But essentially, if your child is loving to put things in other things, <laughs> things in boxes, um, they're probably in the containment schema and this is a great toy to have. Oscar um, loves it, has loved it for so long. Um, it's had a bit of a battering, poor panda's lost an ear, but I always find it at the end of the day made up. So it's great and it's always something to play with. Up here we have some lolly sticks with Velcro. These, again, are just like a little DIY open-ended toy. They can be made into shapes. They just get basically used for different things. They get taken around in these trucks for rubble or whatever. But having like little things that are open-ended could be anything in your playroom. And I guess these are really cheap as well. Um, it's really handy to have. And then here we have our Yoto player. I have done a whole video with Yoto. I actually worked with them on that video. This video is not sponsored by them, but um, this gets used every single day. It has a clock, which is amazing. And basically it is a screen free uh, audio speaker. You get these cards, which have different stories or songs. So there's Roald Dahl, there's Tabby McTat. There's also um, music ones. There's also podcasts, radio stations as well. And so it's a way for your child to independently access audiobooks and music. And it's all completely safe because it has no ads. It has no screen. It has no microphone, uh, no camera. So you can be rest assured that your child is safe when they're using it. And it's really simple to use. So basically this is volume and you can set a parental, um, what do you call it? A parental thing to say how loud you want it to be able to go. There's an app that a pre a parent app that goes with it and then this side kind of skips the tracks if you turn it so if you're listening to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory if you turn this it will skip the chapters if you're listening to a song it will skip the songs and then if you press it you get a little podcast designed for children press it twice and you get a children's radio station it is incredible so if you're looking for something for um, a young child as a present, um, I would really recommend a Yoto player. I actually have a discount code as well, so I will pop that in the description box below. It gets you £10 off. Um, that's only available for UK residents, but it, it's wonderful. And they do ship worldwide, I will say that. So that's that. Here we have another little activity. Oscar is starting to pay um, an interest in numbers, and this is... The activity that I've got out for him at the moment to support that. This is not being pushed on him. It's not like I'm forcing him to do this every day. We do it together. He does it on his own. Um, and I will link it in the description box below. So essentially you have the puzzle pieces for the numbers. Um, so they go in. Then there's like an additional fishing game. I'm not too bothered about the fishing game. Um, it has like little fish. It has the numbers. And they go in there as well. And there's also... There's also the fishing rod, so you can create a whole different game with that. Um, but I'm not so fussed about them being on here. But what I do like is the number and then these little spokes and these rings go on. And because of the size of the spokes, you only are able to fit this many on. So only seven fit. So it's great for self-correction. So a child can't make a mistake like they have to have seven on there to fill it. If they have eight, it's you know, it falls over the top. If they have less than seven, then they have a gap. So it's a really great resource for starting to learn one-to-one -one correspondence and also recognizing the actual numerals. So I really recommend that. And then over here we have our Grimm's Rainbow and Grimm's Semicircles. These get used all 
all the time. Um, I do get people asking um, that they have a rainbow, or they've bought a rainbow and it doesn't get used. What I would say is it might be a case that if your child isn't used to open-ended toys, that they might not know how to use it. Like they might be a bit worried, it might look a bit too neat. Um, they might not want to touch it kind of thing. It might look too much like it's a display in a shop. So maybe just display it in different ways. Encourage your child when you're playing with them to say, oh, you know, maybe we could put the animals on some grass. Why don't we get the rainbow? And, you know, then you could put your cows on the grass, you know, come up with different ways that they can use it and feel confident that it could be different things. Like, oh, let's have some water for the ducks to swim in or, you know, different things. Whatever you can think of, children can think of, 10 times more different things to use for it. So that is that. Okay, first basket is a set of plastic dinosaurs. Oscar got these for his birthday. He is dinosaur obsessed and these get used a load with all our open-ended toys. So with these and some of the other things I'm gonna show you with the recycling, with the blocks. So if you've got open-ended toys having people animals, vehicles to go alongside, really supports play value. Then in this one is vehicles. Um, at the moment, they've been rotated so that they include his new ones that he got for his birthday. He wanted buses for his birthday and his auntie bought him a whole set of buses. So they're in here and then I just added some similar sized vehicles to go with. Um, there's always a basket of vehicles. This basket is so battered because it is our vehicle basket and it's always out. Then here we have mag formers. These are essentially just um, plastic shapes that magnetize together to create anything that you'd like. And we also have the set that comes with the wheels so you can make, um, you can make vehicles. And there is also like a little booklet that comes in the pack if you'd like to like follow um, a design. These get used all the time with these, um, like a combination of stuff. Over here is something that's always out, which is balls that are appropriate for throwing inside and bean bags. Again, because they're appropriate for throwing inside. If you have a child that loves to throw stuff and you're getting really frustrated, like if they throw hard toys, <laughs> Get them some bean bags, get them some balls that they're able to throw and direct them to those when you feel that they're in a throwing phase, which is called a trajectory schema. Again, if you don't know what that means, I'll link it above. But if your child is into throwing, moving, climbing, they're probably in the trajectory schema and having those in your playroom is just essential in my eyes. <laughs> Down here is bristle blocks. We've had these since Oscar was, I don't know, six months old. Um, I keep thinking that they're going to go out of fashion <laughs> with him, but they don't. These essentially stick together in any way. So unlike something like Duplo, where you have to kind of stick it more precisely, this is great for younger children because it sticks really easily together. Oscar is really creative with these. He turns them into so many different things, from food to vehicles. There is wheels as well. Um, so they never go away because they're just used all the time. Um, yeah, so that's the bristle blocks. Down here we have a fire engine. He got given this as a gift. Um, it is noisy. It's not something I would buy, but he loves it. So it's there. And like I say, it gets used with the doll's house quite a lot when there's an emergency. Down here is a set of musical instruments. I like having musical instruments out because they tend to not get used all the time, but like if Oscar is listening to some music, he'll then grab some musical instruments and play along. So they stay out. Down here is the Melissa and Doug truck, trailer, backhoe loader. That's kind of self-explanatory. It's really nice and chunky though. So really like this. This was a gift for his birthday again. And then finally, we have a basket of Bio Buddy, which you might say that looks like Duplo, which you would be correct. But this is Bio Buddy, which is from Safari Limited and is plant based. So this is all made from sugar cane. So helping the environment a little bit. Um, it is completely compatible with Duplo as well, because we do have some Duplo cars and the Bio Buddy works, you know, we'll stick to it. But um, yeah, this is Bio Buddy and it is plant-based. So if you're thinking of being a bit more environmentally friendly, they produce plant-based Duplo dupes. 
Thanks for watching this week's video. I really hope you've enjoyed having this whistle stop tour of our playroom. I will put all the details of the Etet Mopetry picklet in the description box below. I'm really um, a massive thanks for them for sponsoring this week's video. If there's anything in this video that you are interested in i will try to put all the links in the description box below um, for those items or similar items if i can find them so thanks for watching guys and i will see you again soon bye